Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever CCHF, was first identified in 1944 when Soviet military personnel encountered the virus during World War II in Crimea, which was then part of the Soviet Union. The disease was initially named, Crimean hemorrhagic fever. In 1969, the virus was also identified in the Congo, and the disease was renamed Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever to reflect its geographic distribution. Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever CCHF, is primarily transmitted to humans through the bite of infected ticks, particularly those of the Hyalama genus. The virus is found in a wide range of wild and domestic animals, such as cattle, goats, and sheep, which can serve as hosts for the ticks. In addition to tick bites, CCHF can also be transmitted through direct contact with the blood or tissues of infected animals during or immediately after slaughtering. This can pose a risk for farmers, veterinarians, and workers in the livestock industry. Human-to-human -human transmission can occur through close contact with the blood, secretions, organs, or other bodily fluids of infected individuals. This transmission route is particularly concerning for healthcare workers who may be exposed to the virus while treating patients with CCHF if proper infection control measures are not followed. In summary, the transmission routes of Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever include Tick bites Direct contact with infected animals' blood or tissues Human-to-human -human transmission through contact with bodily fluids of infected individuals Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever CCHF, is a severe viral disease with symptoms that can vary widely. The incubation period typically ranges from 1 to 13 days, with an average of 3 to 7 days. After the incubation period, the symptoms of CCHF can develop suddenly and may include high fever, chills, severe headache, muscle aches and joint pain, nausea and vomiting, diarrhea, abdominal pain, sore throat, photophobia, sensitivity to light. As the disease progresses, more severe symptoms may appear, such as petechia, small red or purple spots on the skin due to bleeding, ecchymoses, larger patches of blood under the skin, hemorrhaging, bleeding, from the gums, nose, or other sites, hematemesis, vomiting blood, and melena, black, terry stools due to digested blood, jaundice, yellowing of the skin and eyes, kidney and liver dysfunction, rapid heart rate, low blood pressure, disorientation and confusion, seizures, coma. Not everyone who contracts CCHF will experience all of these symptoms, and the severity of the illness can vary from person to person. Recovery from CCHF can be slow and may take several weeks or months, with lasting complications such as hair loss, mood changes, and memory problems. The case fatality rate for CCHF can be as high as 30%. Prompt diagnosis and appropriate treatment are critical for improving the chances of recovery. There is no specific antiviral treatment for Crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever CCHF. Treatment mainly consists of providing supportive care to address the symptoms and maintain the patient's vital functions. Supportive care for CCHF may include Fluid and electrolyte replacement, to prevent dehydration and maintain a proper balance of electrolytes in the body, which is essential for normal organ function. Oxygen therapy. Supplemental oxygen may be provided to patients experiencing breathing difficulties or low blood oxygen levels. Blood transfusions. In cases of severe bleeding, patients may require blood transfusions to replace lost blood volume and improve their hemodynamic stability. Organ support. In severe cases, organ failure may occur, necessitating interventions such as dialysis for kidney failure or mechanical ventilation for respiratory failure. Medications. To manage symptoms, medications may be administered for pain relief, fever reduction, and to treat or prevent secondary infections. In some cases, the antiviral drug ribavirin has been used to treat CCHF, but its effectiveness remains controversial and more research is needed to determine its role in treating the disease. Preventing infection through tick bite avoidance, proper handling of livestock and their tissues, and implementing strict infection control measures in healthcare settings are crucial in reducing the risk of CCHF transmission and infection. There is currently no licensed vaccine for CCHF, 
but research is ongoing in this area. Preventing crimean Congo hemorrhagic fever CCHF, primarily involves reducing the risk of exposure to the virus and taking measures to control the transmission. Here are some steps for prevention. Tick control. Use insect repellents containing DEET, wear light-colored long-sleeved shirts and pants, and tuck pant legs into socks when in tick-infested areas. Regularly inspect clothing and skin for ticks and remove them promptly. Personal protective equipment, PPE, when handling animals or working in areas with a risk of exposure to CCHF, wear appropriate protective clothing, such as gloves, masks, goggles, and gowns, to minimize contact with blood, tissues, and other bodily fluids. Safe handling of livestock. Practice proper hygiene and use protective equipment when handling, slaughtering, or butchering animals, especially in areas where CCHF is known to be present. Dispose of waste materials appropriately and maintain clean environments for animals. Safe food handling. Cook meat thoroughly to kill any potential pathogens, including CCHF virus, and practice good food hygiene, including hand washing and avoiding cross-contamination between raw and cooked foods. Healthcare settings. Implement strict infection control measures, such as proper hand hygiene, use of personal protective equipment, isolation of infected patients, and proper disposal of contaminated materials, to minimize the risk of transmission to healthcare workers and other patients. Public health surveillance. Monitor and control tick populations, educate the public about the risks of CCHF and prevention measures, and maintain a strong public health infrastructure to detect and respond to outbreaks promptly. Travel precautions. If traveling to areas where CCHF is prevalent, take preventive measures, such as using insect repellents, wearing protective clothing, and practicing safe food handling. Although there is currently no licensed vaccine for CCHF, ongoing research is focused on developing effective vaccines to prevent the disease.